Good morning, my name is Robin Neville. I'm going to talk to you about my project on shape morphing honeycombs through kirigami. So honeycombs you probably know is a structural component which is very light and stiff, very structurally efficient, uh, and generally used with skins to make sandwich panels, which are very good um, in that sort of flat or slightly curved panel environment. But when you take them out of that environment of flat or slightly curved panels, the honeycombs generally don't perform so well. It's difficult to bend them into complex components um, because they develop anti-glastic curvature and they can be very easily damaged during manufacturing. So that's where my work comes in. Essentially I'm trying to use kirigami to make honeycombs which are, uh, I guess, trying, trying to solve some of those weaknesses of traditional honeycombs. Sacrificing some of the structural performance but gaining a lot of flexibility, both in terms of structural flexibility and uh, range of application. So what is kirigami? Hopefully you recognize the crane at the top of the screen. That's the origami. Kirigami is just origami but cutting as well. And essentially we are using that to transform a sheet material into a 3D structure. And the inclusion of cutting allows us to make holes, which as you can see in these specimens at the bottom, uh, allows us to make honeycombs. And these three specimens are made by Nojimo and Saito. Um, my work is kind of following on from theirs. So they developed a lot of the maths to um, produce useful shapes. So these are kind of one, one piece honeycombs, no um, machining. So a brief outline of the process. So we start with our pristine sheet material at the top left. Uh, the first step is to slit uh, a sort of regular pattern of cuts into the material. Um, the holes as well, we'll come back to that later. Um, step number two is to corrugate the sheet such that the slits align with the edges of the corrugations. And step number four is to fold, those, fold that corrugated sheet back on itself such that the slits open up into these kind of hexagonal holes that you can see here. So this gives us a new kind of honeycomb. I'm calling it an open honeycomb because it lacks um, a closed sort of cell. And this gives us some new parameters which traditional honeycombs don't have because of the presence of all these folds in the structure. Um, so we have fold stiffness K and fold angle alpha. And my work so far has focused on characterizing the effect of those new parameters on the mechanical properties of the structure. So a brief outline of the results. Um, this is an interesting one I've discovered very recently actually. It's kind of uh, Poisson switch behavior. So in this graph, what we're looking at on the x-axis is the fold angle alpha, that's this here. And on the y-axis is the out-of-plane Poisson's ratio. And you can see that at, this, at the, some critical angle alpha when the uh, corners of the strip are aligned with the load, you get a sort of asymptote in the Poisson's ratio. And on the right, we have very large positive uh, values. And on the left, we have very large negative values. So with a very small sort of in-plane extension of the honeycomb or compression, you could switch between uh, or get a very large difference in Poisson's ratio. And depending on the value of the hinge stiffness, you could have a gradual transition or quite a sudden sort of snap. Um, and what we're looking at on the right here is the moduli. Uh, let's talk the specific moduli, which is taking also into account the density of the configurations. Um, and this plot is just showing that for a relatively small value of the fold angle, so 15 degrees in this case, the relative moduli are pretty close to that of a traditional honeycomb. So you're taking a small hit in terms of um, stiffness, but you gain that flexibility of, uh, in this case, would be useful for maybe ease of layup forming complex um, sandwich panel components. And lastly, um, for morphing and deployable structures, so the holes that we saw earlier, um, they also line up and form holes in the cell walls, which allow us to thread cables and potentially also stiff rods or other inserts in the structure, which allow us to actuate it. So you can see on the right here, we have uh, one specimen, and I'm pulling on different cables at different locations in the structure to produce different deformed shapes. Um, so I'm thinking this could be potentially useful for morphing structures, maybe a small scale leading edge or trailing edge morphing structure. So thank you for your attention. I'd like to thank my sponsors and supervisors and we welcome any questions.